Howdy. This is a different kind of show today. This video is geared more toward you single guys that are coming here by yourself. You're going to face the same dilemma that I faced when I came here. You're going to think, you're going to go to the grocery store and you're going to be looking at things that are on the shelf. You're going to be trying to figure out what the hell is what. Because it's all in Spanish, most of it is. And eventually you're going to get it figured out and you'll start buying some things and you're going to bring them home. You're going to start trying to cook, hopefully, and you're going to try to get some kind of a, a level of comfort in knowing that you can fix anything in the kitchen like you did when you were back home. So today, I'm going to cook chocolate chip cookies. And as soon as I come back, we'll get started. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. Alright, so here's what I have. I bought today for four dollars and seventy-five cents. You can see right there, four seventy-five. By the way, I gotta tell you. I started thinking about this idea of doing this. I just about peed down both my legs with excitement. I hope you are too. I'm sure that you'll probably want to watch this video two or three times today because of all the fun that it's going to be. Wait until I read the instructions to you. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, Republica del Cacao. Chocolate Pino de Origin. Origin. Whatever the hell that means. I don't know. I didn't interpret that part. But anyway, on the back, you can see from the cover there's chocolate chip cookies. Okay, it cost me four dollars and seventy-five cents at Mega Magazine. It probably I don't know what it would cost to buy something like this in the States. I'm sure it's double that at least. Or maybe three times that much. Four seventy-five. I'm not you can leave comments in the comment section for all you grocery shoppers, both men and women that know and pay attention to your prices unlike me where i just go and get stuff and then go through shock when i get through the line but anyway let's get started all right i'm going to read the, the back of the box in spanish okay one funda mez mezla para papera galetas 60 grams of chocolate negro 56 percent cocoa crassiado Crassiado, yeah, I think that's what it is. One und huevos enteros. One gram, 100 grams mantequilla sin sal de tita. So that's butter, okay? So basically, it's the box. No, not the box. But the ingredients that are in the box. This is the powder stuff. And then here's the chocolate. I'm going to chop this up. I have to make chocolate chips out of it. This is pure cocoa. Okay, from here in Ecuador, and I'll tell you what, if you haven't had chocolate from Ecuador, you haven't had chocolate, period. That's all there is to it. This, this stuff that grows right here is unlike anything that you'll buy on the shelves in the U.S. or Canada or wherever. You haven't had chocolate until you've had it here. So then for preparation, it requires that I preheat the oven to 160 degrees centigrade. That's pre-caliente el horno Ah, 160 degrees centigrade. That's step number one. Number two, incorpore todos los ingredientes en un tazón. So that means pour all the ingredients in a bowl. The first one there, I, I, I should have. I'm, I'm sorry for I didn't interpret. I'm, I'm I'm not doing you any justice here. I apologize. The first step was preheat the oven to 160 degrees centigrade. Okay, so step three, amase las ingredientes a mano hasta obtener, 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 what, the obtener, una masa homogenea, approximately five minutos. Okay, so what they're saying is knead by hand until solid. <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't, yeah, that's, I think that's what that means. Yeah, knead by hand until solid. Number four, incorporate. El chocolate, chocolate negro, 56% cocoa, troceado, troceado, yeah, troceado, uniform, uniformemente a la mezcla. So that means add, 
add cocoa evenly chopped. Okay. Number five, divide la masa in portions de 30 gram and aga boditas. Divide into portions and make balls. I'll be the only guy in this building today with balls. Number six, <laughs> uh, croque las portions en una bandeja para hornera separadas por al menos three centimeters on three seat. Place the portions on a baking sheet separated by at least three centimeters. And then number seven, horni for 10 a 12 minutos hasta obtener una coloración dorada. Bake for 10 to 12 minutes until golden brown. There we have it, folks. So, when I come back here in just a second, I'm going to get off of this view, and I'm going to get everything prepared, and I'm going to I'm going to record me actually preparing and making these cookies. So I'll be right back. Okay, got to get the stuff together. I need an egg. Got to need drop a few eggs to big legs, big egg. And of course, I have a little scale that I use to measure things with. And I want to make sure, I don't know, it says 100 grams of unsalted butter. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, oh, I have to change this over to grams. Here we go. So, Oh my god, that's 162 grams right there. Let's see here, I have to melt this. So, I will use a little bowl here. Let's see here, that is 224 grams. I wonder if I can set that to zero. So I can make it, you know what I mean? I, have to, I, I don't have to do the math here. Well, let's see. If it says for 100 grams of unsalted butter, if that weighs 224 grams, and if I put butter in it, I need it to come back to, I need it to be 324 grams. So that right there is 380. So now I need to cut up some butter and put that in there. I want 324 grams of butter. This is unsalted butter. This, this by the way, is butter unlike you can get back home. This is called Montequilla and this stuff is really good stuff. If I put that in there, that's 248. Oh, that's going to be a lot of butter. But that's okay. We like butter. 264. I want 324, right? There's 286. I may not do this. Much. This is a lot of butter. But, oh well. There's 300. Alright, so there's three. That's 300. I want 324, right? There's 311. I'll do about the same amount. 321. That's close enough, right? Right? Just now realized I'm not actually on camera, but anyway, the, the show is right here anyway, right? So there's my 324. There's my 100 grams of butter. See? Alright, turn this off. And I'm just going to put this in the microwave. Or, I don't know, a minute 30. So let's that, see what happens there. I have one egg. This is a rather large egg, but it's the only egg I've got. So I'm going to crack it and mix it up. Mess, mess, mess. do all this by hand and I get my bowl here this is crazy. so I mean I don't know he didn't say the scramble day but I did it anyway I don't know if I'm supposed to do that or not he didn't say whether to scramble it or not and by the way I've got the oven preheating I hope it's still preheating no it is can't believe it I lift my oven without blowing my house up. 
from my partner. Okay, so here's the ingredients. That's the story. So I got the the mix. I got one whole egg. I got unsalted butter. I have to mix all that in a bowl. And that's just powder. I don't know if there's a lot of sugar in there or not. Remove that. And I'm not going to put the egg in there just yet. I need to chop up my cocoa. My cocoa. So. And let me see how the butter went. That thing's probably going to be so damn hot I won't want to pick it up. I have to use my rag. It melted. Yeah, it's melted. Alright, there's my 100 grams of butter. And let's see here. Pay attention, guys. I know this is a real complex process. Hope I am recording. And I think the idea here is you, know, you want to make chocolate, chocolate chips. That's the whole purpose of having this stuff here. So I'm just going to just kind of do it like this. Just kind of, of course, you cut it up and make chips out of it. I don't want to make it too fine, you know. I don't think. I don't want any real big chunks of chocolate. The fun part is going to be mixing all this. And by the way, I did wash my hands before I started all this. So be sure you do that too. Alright. So, mix all that in there, like that. And, put the egg in. And even though the instructions said to knead by hand, uh, I don't think so. Ouch, boy, that is hot. Whew. Never thought you'd see such an exciting cooking show, did you? Only in Ecuador. Here we are. You know, the egg kind of started to cook in there. All right, mix, mix, mix. And that's my famous cooking show guy in San Diego would say, and we mix. can't remember his name, but I love, love watching this channel. And I can't remember what he's called. Sam the Cooking Guy. If you ever get a chance to see Sam the Cooking Guy, YouTube channel, watch it. It's awesome. The guy is funny, and he's good. I mean, he cooks a lot of neat stuff. He owns a restaurant in downtown San Diego, and he... Sorry, Sam. I'm sorry I used your phrase, but... I promise I won't make a habit of it because I mean I'm not doing a cooking show I'm just doing this video because quite frankly I didn't have anything else to talk about today so I wanted to do making cookies here in Ecuador you know with instructions that are written in Spanish because I mean this is going to be a challenge for some of these expats that come here so I'm sure you understand but anyway I'm putting a plug in for your channel Sam the Cooking Guy Check it out guys, he's really good. And girls, ladies, mahotas, mahotas, I think that's what it is. Hombres and mahotas. So, this is actually turning out pretty good. I didn't have to put my hand in here. I think that I might do it just for the hell of it. But, just being on the safe side, I'm gonna wash my hands again. Cause I wanna make sure this is really kneaded up good. Why do they call it kneaded? I K N E A D E D, kneaded. Why don't they just say, mix it with your hands? You know, I don't get that. What up with that? And you got my cleanliness is next to godliness. You don't want to take any chances, man. You, you know, especially when you're in a foreign country and you, you know, you don't want to get sick. So here goes. Oh boy. I want to make sure I'm using my fist. Make sure it's all mixed up together real good. Like a real cookie paste, you know? I don't know if you've ever made cookies before. But see how you know, kind of mash it all up together. It's the way I like to do hamburger meat. Oh, this has got a lot of butter in it. Well, I'll tell you. you know. But, nice looking dough. See? What do you think? Put them right there. Looks ready to spoon up and place on the tray, right? 
I just don't want there to be any dry ingredients in it, and it's got to be all mixed up really good. But this is mixing up quite nicely. Oh, that's hot. That's still hot. <laughs> Make a note, if you heat something up in the microwave in a porcelain bowl, it's going to be hotter than hell when it comes up. Why don't we, why can't we make something, why can't somebody not invent a bowl that won't get hot when you put it in the microwave? It gets hot, I guess, from the ingredients hooking up, hooking up, heating up. So is this kneading? See, look at all this butter. Oh my God, that's a lot of butter. I know some people are probably freaking out thinking, oh, you're going to eat all that? All that butter? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm making it. Not just about this show. Get ready to spoon up. The butter is just coming up to the top. Okay, so I have a baking sheet. Actually, I bought this baking sheet this morning at Mega Maxi. See, nice big baking sheet. Uh, how much was it, Don? Uh, I don't know. It was a couple dollars. It wasn't very expensive at all. A couple three dollars. You know. Stuff like that that's made here, you know, or made here in the country or here in the region is always going to be pretty cheap. And, you know, and I'll probably, probably won't keep it forever. If I should happen to decide to leave, I'm certainly not going to carry it with me. Alright, so now I need to spoon up. And actually, this is a non-stick pan. But just to be on the safe side, I bought this diamond papo aluminino. Aluminino. Nino. No, Nino. And what it is, it's nonstick aluminum foil, believe it or not. And we'll try it, see how it works. Why do they have to put these stickers on here to make it hard to unpeel? Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not going to bore you with spooning up my cookies. It's getting hot in here already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and it'll probably take me an hour to get this sticker off of this foil. And what I'll do is I'll just come back when I'm ready to... Well, actually what I'll do is I'll come back when I'm ready to take it out of the oven. Now that, it's only going to take 10 to 12 minutes. And I don't know about you, but usually when I bake something I learned this trick from Julia Child or somebody from way back that the best way to know when something is done in the oven is when you start smelling it. That's when you need to start checking it. So that's kind of the way I do. They say 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on the timer, and but I'm also going to pay real attention to my smell. You know, the smell in, in the apartment here. So, I will be back. Okay, I'm back, and I, 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 I spooned it all up, and I got that left over. So there is the three centimeters apart, I guess. I don't know. In the oven it goes, and I got the tray on the center rack, and that tray just barely fits in that oven. So anyway, I'll be back in ten to twelve minutes. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to check the. It's been about twelve minutes. Let's see how they came out. I'll use my flashlight and look at them in the oven. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll better pull them out. I can sure smell them. Uh, this is always the fun part is pulling hot shit out of the oven. I just hate these people that just reach in and grab it and pull it and yank it and pull it right out and don't burn themselves. I, I have to burn myself almost every time. I did good this time. I don't have a toothpick to check this. I'll just stick this knife in there. Nothing stuck to it. I'm gonna say they're done. It's not the prettiest sight in the world. I think I got them a little bit too close together. They got kind of flat, but I'll just wait until they get done, and then I'll I'll take a spatula and just cut them. You know, and they kind of came out kind of square looking, you know, except for these round ones down here. But I bet you these are gonna be good. I bet you these are gonna be awful rich. And I just won't know until I try it. So anyway, that's it for today. I just wanted you to see how easy it is. I will, uh, I'm not going to report on whether these are good or not. It's like, 
I'm almost afraid to. I'll let them cool down. I'll come back in a few minutes. I'll let them cool down and and then I'll cut them and then I'll do, I guess, the taste test. Okay, so I will be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Let me see here how this came out. My little square spatula. Oh, oh, they didn't stick to the pan either. I can't believe that. This is that non-stick aluminum foil. Of course, with all that butter that's in there. Uh, there's one right there. Does that look okay? Does that look good? Hmm. Wow, that turned out good. Tastes like a real cookie. One thing I like about cookies and sweets and stuff like that in Ecuador, they don't really load stuff up with sugar. So, I don't taste any sugar in this at all. That's it. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Just wake up and smoke coffee and drink pot. Wait, what?